Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart, American Forces Radio, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates like KMAV, 99 KMSR, and the mightier 1090. Maybe you're listening on podcast or via replay on Sirius XM. Or maybe you're watching on video stream, on Twitch or YouTube, however you're joining me today. I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. And if not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. I don't know if it's sunny in Hawaii. You know, Brian goes to Hawaii and all we get are bottles of Waikia. Hopefully he'll he'll bring home some Mauna Loa macadamia nuts. That that would be nice. It's Friday. You know what that means. I'm going to ramble here for a while. That's what that means. Before Filthy Tom Lawler joins me on the show, there's a lot to get into. A lot of events this weekend. The biggest one, of course, being Elimination Chamber, the last major premium live event before WrestleMania, which is the most premium of all of the live events, I would say. And speaking of events, I'll get the Twitter plugs out of the way early here. The website is at F4W or W-O-N-F4W. I'm at Semper Vivi. Filthy is at Filthy Tom Lawler, Sports Byline USA. And, of course, Jim Valley and Andrew Zarian. And I bring up Andrew Zarian because alongside PW Insider, he is reporting that the third annual Forbidden Door pay-per-view event is scheduled for Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York. Forbidden Door 3 is set for June at the Tennis Stadium, although the exact date is not known yet. Arthur Ashe has been the site of AEW Grand Slam, uh, the Grand Slam edition of Dynamite, for the past three years in 2021. The show set the record for the highest attended non-WWE wrestling show in New York City since 19... 19- 60 so that is going to be on its way apparently according to andrew and pw insider on its way as hopefully i was going to say the music would be on its way to cut this segment off so we can get to commercial and get back to the meat of the matter with the meatiest man of all filthy tom lawler wrestling observer live fish could swim this far offshore. Yeah. Shoulders ran like the wind, but he could find no peace. Thank <laughs> you. 
Denver Live. Mike Semper VV here with you alongside Filthy Tom Lawler because it is Filthy Friday here on Wrestling Observer Live. And I got the plugs about Twitter out of the way early. That gave me some time to tell you about the wrestling news, everything you need to know to get your day started or get you up to date or get you to your favorite long-form review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave and Garrett Gonzalez, which should be up tonight slash early tomorrow morning for subscribers at Wrestling Observer Radio. Dave and Brian are going to be back, I would assume, late tomorrow night after the UFC shows and after wwe elimination chamber and a whole bunch of other stuff that we're going to be getting into on this show if you want a little condensed form of what is happening in all the uh, the news and professional wrestling wrestling news is the place for you go to wrestlingnews.com wherever you find your favorite podcast and at wrestling news av on facebook and twitter filthy how are you good good to great Mm. We in the house today, Mike. Filthy Friday. Lots of news coming up with Dave and Garrett. Lots of news with Dave and Brian if he ever makes it back. Lots of news for you and I to talk about here heading into the weekend. And I'll be honest, I'm excited. We've got UFC. We've got WWE. We've got PFL versus Bellator. There's another... New Japan show tonight. Seemingly, it never ends. CMLL at Arena Mexico. We got TNA to talk about. Believe it or not, they they have two shows. They have one show at least. Then they're going to all have a sit down with the owner, Leonard Asper, where he responds to all of their open letter uh, requests. And we'll see how that goes. That may uh, throw a, a little wrench in the Bayou Blast TV tapings that are supposed to take place. But we'll get into all of that stuff. But, I mean, Tom, fortunately... Or unfortunately, depending on how you look at things, we are going to have an elimination chamber. And there was a possibility that we were not going to have an elimination chamber if they would have sent the cage up the Suez Canal as they originally planned. I don't know if you've seen this news, everybody. It's up on the front page of the Wrestling Observer website. I think Joseph Courier was the one who posted it up there. That while speaking at WWE's press event slash pep rally in Perth today, Michael Cole revealed that it took more than a month for the Elimination Chamber cage to get to its location at Optus Stadium. The structure was supposed to be shipped through the Suez Canal, but that couldn't happen due to pirates. Yes, pirates. The cage was instead sent to Miami then shipped by truck to Los Angeles, then shipped to Sydney, Australia, and then arrived in Perth on a train from Sydney. So, Tom, I mean, you may know better than me. I mean, are there any steps that could have been taken by those men that are, 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 are captaining these boats where they could have fought off some of these pirates? Well, first, I'd just like to clarify that this is the Captain Jack Sparrow type of pirate not the high budget triple x film pirates that stopped the elimination chamber from reaching its destination shout out to carmen luvana now coincidentally yesterday on my youtube feed popped up what do cargo ships do to deter pirates and it was a 15 minute video and i watched it little did i know Little did I know that I would use this knowledge here today, because in that video, there were quite a number of different tactics they would use. One, the water gun. I was going to say outgun them, I think would be number one, but. Well, the, the water gun is one of them, the giant water hose that you try to spray the pirates with as they approach. You could use a cannonball you could use other firearms they throw out a trip wire of sorts i guess would be the best way to put it like a some netting that trips up the boats sometimes stopping them and heaving the pirates overseas i swear i saw that in a looney tunes cartoon one time i think they drew a line in the water and then like the the boat hit it and they flew over that's where they got that technology from this is a serious show, Mike. Sorry. 
They also come equipped many times with barbed wire or chicken wire that they can put up in a haste to stop the Pirates. Although there was a few years ago, and I, it may have actually happened in the Suez Canal, a few years ago, uh, and I believe it was an Israeli ship was boarded after a helicopter actually dropped off some of these pirates and a camera crew. I'll be damned. So, hmm. But we learned something today, and that's these these are the steps that they could have taken. WWE could have taken as they 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 tried to get the cage over to. T- Perth, Australia, for the Elimination Chamber. And look, SmackDown was taped last Friday. Um, the bl- the Bloodline's going to appear. We had L.A. Knight and Drew McIntyre. Braun Breaker's going to debut. But obviously, all of this is leading in to tomorrow's Elimination Chamber show. And Tommy, I mean, was there was there any more that you could tell us on the Pirates, or was that pretty much everything? I could make a Paul Birchall joke of some sort. But uh, I'm gonna. I won't do it. He was just on TNA or TNA. He was just on NWA last week, I believe it was wrestling the the Thrill Billy Silas Mason for the NWA National Title or one of their titles that they had. But yeah, they broke Paul Burchill back out after quite some time. Didn't look too bad either. Always a fan of Paul Burchill, the innovator of the C4, which is oftentimes misinterpreted as a Spanish fly, but I'm not going to get into that. <laughs> the, the, te- the technical differences between the C4 and the Spanish. I don't even remember the C4. I got to well, be honest, the one uh, I remember about virtual is, a- is the entrance and then the, you know, Katie Lee. I remember her too. Uh, the C4 is a one-person Spanish fly. Spanish fly is a two-person move. It's a tag team move. Off the top rope. So I can't remember what was Spanish announced team. C four is the same move, but it's done by one person. Hmm. Can you demonstrate? The people on the radio would love to see it. You're (laughs) one person. Come on, back up the camera. Let's see it. I can't (laughs) even pull it off on a gig when somebody's paying me. (laughs) Never mind here in my studio. Thank God we're we not move on. Paid. I know. Thank God we're not getting paid to do this show because, God, they would want their money back. But Elimination <laughs> Chamber, 5 in the morning. That means it's 2 in the morning, filthy Tom Lawler time. He'll be just going to sleep as this show begins for everybody else who's going to be watching it live. WWE World Heavyweight Championship Elimination Chamber number one contenders match, whatever you want to say. Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, Drew McIntyre, LA Knight, Logan Paul, It screams to me that Drew McIntyre is going to win this thing filthy. We have not even really talked about, and nobody's talked about Orton or Lashley or Owens or even thought to try to build any of these gentlemen a story to get them into winning this match and on the way to facing uh, Seth Rollins. So, I mean, McIntyre or no one? What do you think? Well, I think Bobby Lashley is probably going to have to deal with some variation of the final testament, I would imagine, that will take him out. As seems to always happen to Bobby Lashley. Always some chicanery. <laughs> hey, I mean, if I was if I was a booker, Bobby Lashley would not be losing clean to very many people, and he rarely does. So I would imagine he's going to get taken out by them in some way, shape, or form. I think Kevin Owens and Logan Paul are headed towards another showdown. Probably at WrestleMania for that title, I would imagine, after they've been feuding for the past few months. And I like this feud. And I'd like to see it culminate at WrestleMania. So that leaves who else, Mike? It leaves Drew McIntyre, of course, who's a favorite. It leaves Randy Orton. And it leaves, yeah, L.A. Knight, who, although I'm sure there's a subset of fans who would love to see him win the belt here at Mania. I just don't quite think it's his time. However, it is time. Three, two, one for Drew McIntyre to kick us out to a break with a big Claymore and a win tomorrow in the chamber. Wrestling Observer Live. Talk to us about
about the process of bringing her in and yeah. just how you felt about that? Uh, listen, more than anything, I can identify with people coming out of another company and maybe feeling like they never got utilized to their fullest potential. And, you know, that's how she felt. And I didn't know Ash before. And of course, we, you know, it's a small world, the wrestling world, whether you know people or not, you feel like you know them, you know of them, you know, people, you know, there's always a connection. And so many people were telling me, you know, she wants to work. She wants to do something, you know, generally she could go say to AEW or something like that. And you just never know what's going to happen. At least I think we are known for at least pretty much when someone comes into our company, we're going to utilize them. Um, I think that's a known fact and people can just sit back and watch our product and see that. And also the knockouts division is also, Hey, we averaged three female matches on a pay-per-view. Uh, we pretty much use every single girl in that locker room. Um, that's enticing to talent, right? And they want to be used and they want to, and I've heard about her work ethic. She's really expressed and every other person that worked with her vouched for her work ethic. I respect that. You know, I, I like those people who are hungry and want it and want to add something to our division. And I think she's going to be a great addition. I think she's already made a splash and now let's see what she's got in the ring and everything else. And I can't wait to see her new character and what she wants to bring to it. She's excited. Um, so I think the fans are going to be pleasantly surprised, right? I just can never give her enough props because of not only the performer that she is, but the human being that she is, you know, she's never changed from the girl that I met in NXT. I worked with her. I think people forget when she first came into WWE because I was there on the main roster and she was, and of course, everyone coming into the company is going to be all timid and nice. She's never changed from that person. If anything, she's only gotten better. She is so, it's a testament when you see her interact with the fans and how much they love her and all her loyal fans and the love that she gives back. So I'm talking about outside the ring right now and to see her in the ring. Listen, we can already, we already know she's a star, right? And to see her level up in the ring, because obviously we have a great division. We give the girls a lot of time. We feature them a lot, main events. She has killed it. And I think it just, opened up this confident, newfound confidence for her as well. And I, I remember her when she came into the company, I wasn't there actually, I was doing Amazing Race at the time for her debut, I missed that. <laughs> I, had dealt, I had talked to her before and then I saw, I mean, she had her first match with Kylan King, which was off the charts. Back on the show, Mike Semper, VB, Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Filthy Friday on Wrestling Observer Live. Talking about this here Elimination Chamber show. Drew McIntyre, at least my my choice to come out and win the entire thing. I, I would assume at least. Filthy, who did you say? Uh, look, Randy Orton, this is interesting. I said it right before break. I said, I said Drew McIntyre is hitting a Claymore. He's sending us to break it. He's yeah. going to win the Chamber. Right. It just leaves kind of Randy Orton and L.A. Knight as the odd men out. And I would expect something in the way of a feud to start either there or, you know, does someone interject themselves? They could go back to Orton and Knight who have been kind of quasi feuding in that whole lead up to the Roman Reigns match, including A.J. Styles who's also out there. So I don't know what you, you go back to a three-way with those guys. I, I was going to ask you, if that's the direction they're going to go in with a three-way with those guys for one of the nights at Mania, just to give them something to do. Could be. There's two nights. Maybe we get a, a short little round Robin series out of the guys. Who knows? I mean, could you come up with a 20 match card for WrestleMania this year? If you had to off the top of your head. I mean, I could, and I guess you could, you know, it's hard to draw some of the lines because we still need to see some things play out. I mean, even if Drew McIntyre wins this thing, and I think most of us believe that he will, even if he wins, you still have the Damien Priest thing and what you're going to do with Priest, because I would figure you want him to be strong coming out of Mania, and you want him to do something notable on Mania 
again, if you, if they're not doing anything notable with Damian Priest Mania Weekend, that is a screaming sign to me that he's going to cash that thing in on Monday's. Oh, run. don't you with, think it's going to be he and Finn Balor taking on the awesome truth? And we're going to get our truth. I'm serious. I tell you what, if that's <sighs> you, you know what? I can. I, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give you that. And Miz and our truth win the titles, and people lose yeah. their minds. And JD happy. Mc JD McDonough does something that backfires. Yes. Now here's my uh, question. Then, if usually when they do something like that, when you have the guy with the briefcase and he's downplayed to that degree on the pay per view, is that a sign that either that he's going to cash in on Monday? Or because of the scenario you're laying out with them losing the tag titles, running into the awesome truth, is that the way that you get Damian Priest out of there and Drew McIntyre in there because Judgment Day then goes and screws up his cash-in attempt on Drew? Possible? Because I can't see Drew McIntyre coming out, not coming out of Mania with that title. It's just to me a matter of how long he holds it for. Because I think if he wins, he's beating, you know, Seth Rollins, and then Seth can take some time off, and we're going to have a Drew title reign. Yeah, I think that's a good avenue to go with, Mike. I'm well, glad you, we John. just booked it. Good for the that's future. Right. Somebody cut the check. Let's go. Elimination Chamber women's match. Don't they have a head writer's position available? It's, it's it's possible. That's right. Did they ever fill the Pepperman position? Maybe not. I'm not touching know. that. <laughs> so you make it sound so obscene. Elimination Chamber for the women. Uh, Becky Lynch, Naomi, Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair, Raquel Rodriguez, Tiffany Stratton. Um, I'm not going to fall over shocked if the... You know, the scenario you laid out, let's say Bobby Lashley gets attacked. I don't know if we don't see that with Raquel Rodriguez, except it's not during the match and it's not some distraction that way. It's before the match because her coming out this week, kind of talking about her condition again. I know they it was a surprise they got her in the match. I don't know. I don't know. I could see her be, being taken out of this match and seeing... Look, to me, you could put easily, easily, you could put Jade in this match, in this type of match where she could be hidden, just do a couple of spots, lay there, kind of rolled out on the ground while other people are doing spots, you know, that sort of thing. I don't know. I just, I get this feeling that Raquel may be in peril here when it comes to her position, but we'll see. Overall, though, I mean... Hard to believe that we're not going to get Becky Lynch out of this thing, right? I mean, I'm sure we're going to get some more matches for WrestleMania and some more feuds out of this, including the possibility of Bianca and Tiffany Stratton, which I know would probably be very disappointing for a lot of Bianca fans. But it could be, and again, it could be something that they could do. But what do you think about the women's elimination chamber? Well, I think you're right. I think Becky Lynch should come out of this as the winner. A lot of people thought she was the favorite to win the Rumble. She was dumped out by, I couldn't even tell you who. Maybe Nia Jax. Maybe, maybe Liv Morgan. Right? But it didn't lead to much. And I expect her to come out of here challenging Rhea Ripley at the WrestleMania kickoff event. That I attended here in Las Vegas, there were two females besides the champion Rhea Ripley that hit the stage. One of them was Becky Lynch, who had a face-off with her. The other was Bianca Belair, who has a new show out with her husband, Montez Ford. So I would imagine that they build upon that. It's Becky Lynch against Rhea Ripley. And Mike, what I would do, actually, is I would take Jade Cargill, and I would put her against... Bianca Belair, and I would give her the big win at WrestleMania. I believe they mentioned at the WrestleMania kickoff event, Bianca Belair has won the last three years at WrestleMania. She's won the Royal Rumble, I believe, two times in that in that period. Maybe maybe that's incorrect, but I don't think it hurts her whatsoever to have Jade go over her real big at Mania. 
But is Jade ready for that? I guess that would be the question. Then, if you're going to put ready, Jade it's over... pro wrestling. But if you're going well, to WrestleMania put... was headed by by Bam Bam Bigelow and Lawrence Taylor. That's look. I know that, but like she's not you're telling Lawrence me she Taylor. can't. No, but she could be Logan Paul. But here's my thing. If she's going to get a win like that over somebody, why not do that on NXT? Here's my thing. If she does that, then that means she's ready no. to be a regular on the show, at least a semi-regular, and she's going to have to have a feud and matches. I don't get the impression that they're ready for that yet. And I don't know if I necessarily want to use Jade like that. I mean, honestly, I'm okay with the amount of women that they have I'm completely okay with her being, I don't want to say Omas, but kind of in that position where unless she can really go out there and have a 10 to 12 minute match with somebody, if she can't do that, then what's the point? So to me, I don't know if I want to necessarily use Bianca in that position on what, that show. What do you mean? To what's me, the point? Because to you want to see, Bianca, see Jade, you want to see Jade out there selling her leg but here's the thing. for eight minutes. No, Let but at some point she's five... going to have to. Why not do... No. But here's my thing. Why she not doesn't... then do Bianca and Tiffany then? Because Tiffany's more ready than Jade would be. If you're looking at it from a, a wrestling match standpoint, sure, Mike, I'm not going to disagree with you. But there's a certain aura and star quality that Jade has that very few of the other women have she does absolutely she absolutely does but like, in this case why not have her go squash candace bianca and Indy? <laughs> well i i get it i i don't know i i hear what you're saying but then it's like then I'm they didn't bring in to see her vader didn't come in and Squash Shiro Koshinaka. Yeah, but Vader was he went, it, it, he went right out there working and catch wrestling, you know, earning their stripes and had a you know 15 year career before it either. I mean, one of their problems is they they obviously don't trust her to be able to go. Isn't that part of the issue? And if she beats Bianca, wouldn't that be a sign that she's ready to go? Are you gonna just are you gonna have her squash Bianca and then use her as how are you gonna use her as Brock? From you know, what I've in. seen, I don't care. From what I've seen, she's ready enough to go. She was ready enough to go coming straight from AEW. Fair enough. Fair enough. Then, hey, look, maybe we throw WrestleMania all out. You know, maybe she comes in and she body slams Nia and she takes the match with Rhea and she wins the title from Rhea and it's Jade and it's Becky at Whoa. WrestleMania or something like that. Look, I assume Rhea Ripley, you... you believe as i do that she's going to win this match and we're going to get becky it can't be naya right it can't be no there's somebody she can go over dude how about that how about it mania on one of those nights it's jade against naya she comes out slams naya and beats her and squashes her like a bug nobody's been able to get over on naya except for jade why not do it that way how about good that enough, good enough for me Fair as enough. long as we can end this argument here well it's not is it really an argument i mean honestly it's oh. enough of one it's a first yeah. world per, first world problem argument it is damian priest finn balor as we talked about against the new catch republic get the hell out of here pete dunn tyler bate great team great wrestlers new catch republic What's wrong with british strong style especially now that minoru suzuki gave the name back and got rid of it. Did you see that? No, did he? <laughs> he took. He said. He said New Japan can have it back. Oh, maybe he in, thought he was going to get sued by the uh, Inoki Genome Federation in, or something. Oh yeah, perhaps. <laughs> New Catch Republic. I look. Damien Priest, Finn Balor. I think win this match. Although it should be entertaining. And then, as far as I know, the pre-show match. The only other thing that they've had announced so far is Kyrie Sane and Asuka facing off against Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. I would assume Kyrie and Asuka get the victory there. We'll be back. Wrestling Observer Live. <laughs> Welcome to the special tour of Figure Four Weekly Headquarters, as promised. 
Today I will be accompanied by my assistant Vincenzo, so let's get moving. Hey, don't worry about it. Today's a special day, I'll drive. Vince, today's gonna be a good day, so let's not F anything up, okay? Now, I'd like to tell everybody, I just wanna give a short speech on the way to uh, the compound here today, and that is that we are going through very tough economic times right now. Right, Vince? It's a time of uh, stock market crashing, the yen is devalued, a time of woe and want. And many of you watching this right now, for all I know, are unemployed. But the good thing is, and I always like to look on the bright side, as Vince is well aware, the good news is that for every dark cloud, there is a silver lining. And the silver lining is that figure four weekly is doing great. It's a huge success right now. Subscriptions are up, quality is down, profit margins are skyrocketing, things are going very well. So the one thing is that I don't want to make it seem like money is everything because money cannot buy happiness, but what it can buy is enormous houses. And that makes me happy. So we will be going to see my enormous house, the Figure Four Weekly Compound. And uh, that's where we're heading right now. Mike Sempervivi, filthy Tom Lawler here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. Just the Iron Men. <laughs> the Iron Men of the radio. Just Tony Starks of the airwaves. Not Mike did, Sempervivi. This is more, now we're at you God level, the way we've been doing this show today. This is this is man with the golden arm sort of stuff here. Elimination Chamber, we're done with it. Optus Stadium, 5 o'clock in the morning. Uh, look, it's very annoying if you're on the East Coast of the United States. The rest of the world laughing right now because, well, we usually have to put them in all sorts of hell because, well, the, America, the cradle of civilization where, where all things must take place at uh, between 5 and 8 p.m. in the uh, our time. You know, the rest of you need to suffer, but... Suffering will not be on Kenny Omega's uh, list for too long. At least, at least he's going to have some relief. Tom, he's coming back. Did you hear about this? Kenny, Kenny Omega, Omega on the way back. Yeah, Tell Alex Jabaley. Alex Jabaley, the founder and CEO of CEO Gaming, tweeted out today that he has set up a streaming station for Kenny Omega who will begin to stream video games online very, very soon. You excited? Hey, I'm a fan of Kenny Omega, so let's get him back ASAP, health permitting. Jabali wrote, quote, not sure when the first one will be, but it will be Street Fighter related when the time comes to kick things off. He says hello, end quote. Why would the first thing not be the AEW video game? 
Like, I know his favorite game is Street Fighter. Like, my favorite game right now is still, like, the MLB 23. But, like, if there was the F4W game, like, I would probably want to stream that one. Especially one that's been so maligned like the AEW game has. And considering that it's been out for a while, anybody that didn't buy it, wouldn't you want to try to get them to buy it? I don't know. Am I am I crazy for this? I don't know anything about uh, the streaming of video games. Uh, my whole knowledge of Twitch comes from doing this show. Well, perhaps this is a endeavor that is designed to get as many followers and viewers as possible. And there's more people who own Street Fighter Six, I would imagine, and play that than do AEW Fight Forever. And that's not a slight on Fight Forever because I played the game. And I enjoy it. I played on multiple platforms. Did you make yourself? Was... <sighs> I'm past that point in my life. Sadly, I've never been in the video game. No action figures. And I've quite honestly given up. So well, at least at least you got a, a subject through through this site, which I've never gotten. If I can live vicariously through. Kenny Omega playing Puzzle Fighter 2 or whatever it is on Twitch. I'll go ahead and do so. <laughs> Dance Party 2024. Is that still is that still around? Hey, you know what you didn't tell Maybe me? Maybe a about? little fire up a little leisure suit Larry <laughs> and join me on the F4W Twitch stream. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me about the New Japan deal? I didn't hear about this. I had to see it on your timeline and then actually have to go check it out further. When did and have you been called on this? Because I would love to take this tour, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Please to announce that it has entered into a working relationship with Costa Rica Wrestling Embassy. Did Rocky Romero figure this out? This deal out too? I wasn't briefed on the inner dealings with the Costa Rica Wrestling Embassy. I thought maybe I'd get the jump on it and say something, but there were multiple people who were talking about this already being their territory. A lot of apparently a lot of wrestlers like to go down to Costa Rica and hang out. Oh man, there maybe. seems to be a lot of rich white guys with yeah. like they'll they'll like work part time like in Florida or like around here at yeah. the beach area where yeah, Belize and Costa Rica seem to be the spot for these folks. Yeah, usually one you do one of two things you either fund bow dog and a shady <laughs> mma promotion and you bring in fighters hold fights on the beach in costa rica give them access to copious amounts of women and then hide from the government or or another thing you can do if you want to end up in costa rica and it doesn't involve, you know, going through New Japan is probably the hardest way to get down there. But if you create a virus scan company and then lose your mind and go insane, I can't even say the word I wanted to use on air. <laughs> you might end up uh, hanging out down in Costa Rica, too. But you can watch some New Japan pro wrestling along with CWE, which I guess I'll have to check out. Yeah, I Not see you're going to... Gotta not the only news. The CWE year. Not the only news coming out of New Japan. I assume that's why you brought that up so we could segue yeah, into yeah, a little was, bit of results that was from be this my evening. Pro style. Now I don't know you uh, if you want to talk about these results or not. I mean, I got to be honest. I haven't seen it yet. I know you have those last four results that I saw for the four main matches on the show. After you got through Mayu and Mina. I don't know how I feel about everything that they did here, but the main event, Nick Nemeth, defeats David Finley. David Finley does not get a defense of the Global Heavyweight Championship. The brand-new IWGP Global Heavyweight Championship loses it in his first defense against Nick Nemeth and Matt Riddle, defeating Hiroshi Tanahashi for the NJPW World Television title in the semi-main event. So the two... Big names that have come along here uh, in the last couple of months as they lose Okada, they lose Osprey, they lose Fletcher and some others. They pick up Nemeth and Riddle from WWE. They immediately are belted. What did you think about the decision? What did you think about the matches as you watched them? I am a big fan of Nick Nemeth. Love watching him in the ring. Uh, 
unfortunately, I thought that this was a time where David Finley should have won. I thought David yeah. Finley finally, finally had some momentum. I didn't hear people chirping left and right about how Gabe Kidd should be the leader of the Bullet Club. Dave Finley got the big win at Wrestle Kingdom over both Moxley and Osprey. He looked great. He looked like a killer. He looked like a leader of the Bullet Club. He looked like a leader of the War Dogs in that cage match. And I thought that they should continue with that and that this would be a big defense from him. And I'm just surprised that he lost it. The match was good. The crowd, even in his post-match speech, Nick Nemeth said, you don't know me now, but you will. And it kind of in both instances, he and Matt Riddle both came out, and there weren't as big reactions uh, for the entrances as maybe you would imagine, but they were both able to get the crowd behind them at multiple times uh, during the Nick Nemeth and David Finley match. The crowd was definitely behind Nemeth as he was selling his leg and fighting out of the figure four. Uh, and then eventually he landed, a, he and Finley went back and forth with headbutts. He landed a super kick called the 101 because he's taking people to school. And then the zigzag, now known as the danger zone, to get the win over Finley. And in the uh, Matt Riddle Tanahashi match, which went, I believe, less than nine minutes, the TV title changed hands in a these matches, of course, have a 15-minute time limit, so they are sort of a sprint. But they went through kind of the formula, seemingly, for these matches. You do some wrestling. You do some spots. You hit some signature moves. You go back to some fast-paced wrestling. And then you go to a finish. And Matt Riddle was able to hit the Bro Derrick and get the win. The crowd, I think, was surprised, as was I, because it... The match had it really like, I mean, it was only eight, eight or nine minutes. I was just expecting a longer match out of these two, but definitely solidifies Matt Riddle as a major player in New Japan. He, I believe, teams with the United Empire tonight. We'll see if he is the replacement in some ways for Will Ospreay, who is irreplaceable in most ways in the United Empire, or if he's just there to team with his old bro, Jeff Cobb. But I thought, from what I saw, the Mina Shirakawa challenge of Mayu Iwatani for the IWGP women's title was uh, my favorite thing on the show. I am looking forward to that. Not looking as forward to the never open weight championship match between Evil and Shota Umino. Evil gets his first title defense, I believe, off of the, this reign, but Shota Umino... You know, did he need to lose this? And I'm fine with El Desperado, you know, having another different name in the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship mix. Show the way show's been in House of Torture and then winning it by countout. I mean, he wins by countout after 16 minutes. I mean, was this match worth seeing looking at that result and rolling my eyes i mean was there is there redemption to be seen in the match i mean was that at least good i mean you're asking the wrong guy i did the same thing you did i saw Man. a count out finish i rolled my eyes <laughs> there's a lot I mean, not to like about what's going on right now in new japan i mean i'll just say it there there's a lot to me not to like and i know this is a better subject for the admin mike big audio nightmare which we are going to record on either sunday or monday for subscribers at uh at wrestlingobserver.com but i am not i'm i'm very bearish right now on on the new japan scene just wait for the next u.s show i'm sure that'll be a banger you got that dog inside you, don't you? I do, just like Brian Alvarez. <laughs> our, our, this uh, one's a, Nath, a Nathan's foot long. <laughs> it's New Japan, new beginning in Sapporo. Part two takes place early in the morning. That will actually be uh, somewhat competing. Yeah. I guess I'll be just going off or towards the end of the show by the time that uh, uh, the the – WWE show begins in Australia, but IWGP World Heavyweight title, Naito against Sonata, Hair versus Hair, Yota Suji against Yuyo Uemura, Shingo Takagi against Taichi. Those are the three main matches on the show. 
but notable Tamatanga and Tangaloa against Hikaleo and El Phantasmo. I think a lot of brethren and uh, and, and sit hand hand signals and good brethren going on there at the end of that one. If it's going to be Tamatanga's last match there, and then of course Kazuchika Okada teaming up with Hiroshi Tanahashi, Tomohiro Ishii, and Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi against the United Empire is as uh filthy mentioned there so do you think okada does one job on the way out it ain't gonna be the riddle i doubt but uh who do you think takes the fall there you think there's any shot okada loses before he leaves i think you got a better <laughs> shot of topper harley showing up for this part do than you do okada taking the fall <laughs> on his last match out <laughs> i think he's hitting that rainmaker i think he's doing the pose Suwama is not going to be there to attack him like it's 15 years ago as he does it for <laughs> three minutes. And then he moves on to whatever endeavor he has in his elite career coming up next. You know, I, I, it's you make sure you stand by your phone. I don't think Endeavor's going to be calling, but uh, Leonard Asper from Anthem might be calling you because uh, the crew goes to work for TNA Wrestling tonight with no surrender. Uh, which is going to be available. It is main evented by Moose against Alex Shelley in a no surrender surrender rules match. But apparently there is a meeting taking place on Saturday before the Bayou Blast taping in New Orleans, the TV taping. PW Insider is reporting this, uh, where Leonard Asper is going to sit down with the wrestlers and talk about uh, their letter that they sent their, to both him and Scott Demore about putting Scott back in charge. They are not going to do that. And, in fact, in this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter, apparently DeMore's offer of approximately $10 million to buy TNA from Anthem was turned down cold uh, with no response. So there you go, Wrestling Observer Live. How did you feel about your performance in the Rumble? Um, it went, it went really well. Like all the girls were, they made me look incredible. Um, and thank God for that because like they're there, they're, that's, they're there and they could, the WWE fans can see them every week if they wanted to. But that was, I only have one chance. Like, I felt like my career was writing on that. <laughs> like that's, that's just how it felt. And, uh, for all the girls to just make me look as, as good as they made me look. It was, it was incredible. That moment with Naomi, a former knockouts champion, you guys hug, and then you guys start like, just like going at it. What was that even like? Like, was it deja vu? I don't know. She, well, first of all, the reaction we got was so cool. Um, I thought, I didn't, I didn't expect like all the people to kind of know our history. So the fact that when we were standing off initially, they had that reaction, we hugged, they had a reaction. And then when we started fighting, they had a reaction. It was just, it was so perfect. It was chef's kiss. Um, that was so freaking cool. And the fact that we wrestled, what, two weeks ago in front of a sold out crowd for TNA, their comeback show, like for the Knockouts World title, everything was just so perfect. Yeah, she is an incredible athlete and an incredible wrestler. And I never thought I'd be in the ring with her, at taking her finish, period. So the fact that that happened was actually crazy um what's funny was when we when everything we were playing the match whatever um and i said have you ever done you know your finisher on the apron and she said no she hadn't we we went over it in a practice ring it wasn't working and we didn't have a chance to go out we know that the, the ring aprons are bigger outside uh but we didn't have a chance to go out and like feel it out and one of the producers was like you don't have to have to do it if y'all didn't go over it and I just told her, like, do it. And if there's not enough room, just throw me on the ground. Like, just do it from the apron to the ground. And thank God that didn't happen. But <laughs> I, was tell I was telling the producer, like, I would do this in front of 500 people, much less 50,000 people. So I didn't have a problem with it at all. And uh, she's an amazing wrestler. And I feel like she would have protected me regardless of if we had to do it to the floor or not. <laughs> 
Yes. I was like, when I was watching it, I was nervous because I'm like, first of all, like you're taking this brutal bump. But then on top of that, Bianca, we know was supposed to be standing tall. And I was like, oh my God, what if she like loses her balance? What if she falls oh. too? Like I was thinking like all of these things, but you guys went, I mean, you guys are pros, man. She's so good. No, no chance of that. She would have been fine. No, she no. would have just, she would have fallen off the apron and landed on my body. And like... <laughs> Mike Sempervivi, filthy Tom Lawler here with you. Put a bow on this thing. But we can't get out of here without talking about the biggest event taking place this weekend. PFL against Bellator champions. Available via pay-per-view and ESPN Plus from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The first event for Bellator fighters since the promotion was purchased by the IFL or the PFL. Never thought this could happen. A veteran of these wars filthy tom lawler you gonna be uh you gonna be checking this thing out here ryan bader in the main event i hope to it's a non-stop day R ryan bader in one of the closest things you're gonna have to a freak show fight taking on the near <laughs> seven foot tall hanan ferreira the side-by-side -side comparison of these two guys looks like it's out of that cartoon mike said he saw the uh the pirates get tripped up in the the tripwire earlier. Dude, Ferrer's just, like two. Uh, he looks huge. He's yeah, huge. Un unbelievable size disparity. Uh, you also have what's the other championship fight that's going down? Johnny Eblen taking on Impa Kasangane in the other champion versus champion fight. Clay Collard versus AJ McKee on the undercard. But you talked about it earlier. There's elimination chamber. There's this. PFL yeah. versus Bellator. Elimination Chamber will bleed right into this. There's a KSW show tomorrow with Mohamed Kalidov boxing Thomas Adamek. Josh Barnett's in a wow. grappling match on it. There's Valet Tudo Anything Go Rules fights on there. There's a UFC. There's AEW, I'm sure. It's never ending, Mike. And guess what? Guess what? What's up? Just like I love the listeners out there, I absolutely love it. I can't get enough of wrestling and combat sports, and I can't get enough of listening to you talk about it right here in these very airwaves. That's right. GCW tonight in Dallas. AEW tonight in Chicago. CMLL tonight in Arena, Mexico. If you want it, you can find it. You can get it. It's wrestling, damn it. And we talk about it here. Sports Byline USA, Wrestling Observer Live. We're done talking. She'll talk to you again after a while. Let's get